The former head of John McCain's 2008 presidential campaign, Steve Schmidt, has not been shy about sharing his thoughts on the Republican tax bill. Just before the Senate bill passed early Saturday morning, Schmidt wrote, Every Republican member who has spoken passionately about out-of-control spending or the importance of a return to the regular order who votes for this appalling tax bill was simply conning the American people. And Steve Schmidt joins me now. That regular order comment leads me to a, a question I want to ask you. I'm going to hold off, off on that first because I cannot resist reading you some quotes from the Republican Party back in 2009 and 2010 about the passage of the Affordable Care Act. This is Paul Ryan. I don't think we should just pass bills that we haven't read that I don't know that we don't know what they cost. That's Paul Ryan. We shouldn't rush this thing through just to rush it through for some artificial deadline. Let's get this thing done right. And one more, Congress and the White House have focused their public efforts on platitudes and press conferences while the substance and the details have remained behind closed doors. Meanwhile, what we saw overnight Saturday, Steve, were handwritten changes. We're going to put them up on the screen. Being penned in to this bill at the last minute, Democrats who had been, had been given like maybe an hour or two to read a 500-plus page bill and 6,000 lobbyists approximately working on the bill. Does the Republican Party, are they aware of this hypocrisy or do they just not care? Well, a couple things. Good morning, Joy. Um, when you have a situation where Democratic United States senators say the two from the state of California with a population of 38 million people, when they are unable to access the language of the legislation for the purposes of representing those 38 million people. And the way that they get to see the language is by having it handed to them by a lobbyist who's working with the Republican leadership to write the bill. What that means is the United States Senate, which used to be called the world's greatest deliberative body, that has just gone completely off the rails. And I'm somebody who wants to see a fundamental reformation of the American tax code. Uh, I love the idea of cutting taxes. I love the idea of cutting top marginal rates. It makes my heart flutter and makes me go wobbly in the knees. Uh, this is not that. Uh, this does nothing to lift the wages of working class Americans, uh, and that's the number one economic problem we have in the, in the country. It adds a trillion and a half dollars to the debt. It is a massive corporate tax break paid for by the middle class of the country. It is as irresponsible and reckless a piece of legislation done as, as shipshottedly as you could possibly conceive of. Real disservice, disservice to the American people here. And I think there'll be a big consequence for Republicans in November of 2018, because remember, what they're hailing as a victory has a 25 percent approval level with the actual human beings in the country who will vote. Yeah. And, and you know, you mentioned in your, you know, excoriation of the bill the idea that these are the same people who are talking about return to regular order. And you worked for John McCain in 2008. He was the main yeah. person who was demanding regular order be returned. It's why he voted against the, the appeal of the Affordable Care Act. What do you make of the fact that he turned around, he and other people who've been critical of the process, turned around and voted for this bill? Joy, you're going to have to go ask ask those senators what what the reason is. I, I, it's inexplicable to me if you take what they say at face value here. It, it was, certainly wasn't in the regular order. There was no emergency uh, for it to pass that evening. Uh, and once again, just like in the health care bill that they voted earlier, they don't have the final costs. They don't know particularly what it's going to do. It just shows the complete and total collapse of rigor around the policymaking process in this, in this country. This is not how we ought to be doing multi-trillion dollar legislation that affects 100 percent of the American people. It's just not. Yeah. Beyond just the tax bill, you know, there's so much going on uh, all sort of at the same time. Um, you also have the question, you know, a lot of people have begun to question, quite frankly, Donald Trump's stability. Um, you've started to hear murmurs even off the record from Republicans about it. You've heard on the record murmurs about it from people like Bob Corker. And even beyond just whether he's completely stable, there's been the questions about what he's doing to the country. This is John McCain uh, talking about Donald Trump back in, uh, in October. Um, and he said, we have to fight against propaganda and crackpot conspiracy. Conspiracy theories. We have to fight isolationism, protectionism, and nativism. We have to defeat those who would worsen our divisions. We have to remind our sons and daughters that we be, how we became that we became the most powerful nation on earth by tearing down walls, not building them. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff uh, Flake gave a, a pretty dramatic exit speech along the same lines. Yet we haven't seen Republicans actually do much or take action, and they really seem to just fall in line behind Donald Trump, 
no matter what he does. It, explain to people who do not understand why that is, why that is, in your view. Well, Joy, I, look, I, here's what I think, is that you have 100 percent of the Democrats, 60 to 65 percent of independents, and roughly, and I'm talking about voters, not elected officials, 20 to 25 percent of the Republican Party that just stands in absolute opposition to this president, to his divisions, his malfeasance, his incompetence. And we look at this week, the racial insult in front of 90-year-old United States Marine veterans, combat veterans, the Navajo code talkers. We look at the reality this week, his uh, tweeting of al-Qaeda propaganda, his praising of a British neo-Nazi far-right paramilitary group, which uh, earned him the condemnation of parliamentarians in both parties in the United Kingdom. We have the situation where the American president cannot set foot in Great Britain for fear of permanently damaging the special relationship. You want to talk about a danger to the national security of this country, the estrangement from our closest ally, certainly you can't get much higher than that. And of course, we have an escalating nuclear crisis on the Korean Peninsula with a president that, when you just look at his actions from a layman's perspective, seems to be increasingly unstable. And the Republican Party has discarded every principle uh, that it's held dear on matters of policy. It has gotten in line behind a president uh, who degrades his office, who divides the American people. They're, they're complicit in it with their silence. And I think that there is one question on the ballot in November of 2018, and it's, do you want to put a check on President Donald Trump? And I think that the answer to that question in the overwhelming majority of the American people is yes. And there's going to be a coalition of people, I suspect, that don't agree with each other on very many policies, but agree 100 percent with each other on their concept of fidelity to the Constitution, to the rule of law, to what makes this country a very special place. Yeah. Well, Steve Schmidt, you never mince words, uh, sir, and it's really great to talk to you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Joy. My pleasure. Thank you. And up next, how are how Republicans are trying to defend their terrible, horrible, no good, very bad tax plan.